Today we're going to be talking about how to solve multiplication puzzles. They can look a little tricky at first, but really it's just about understanding how numbers can work together and seeing it in a different way. So with a multiplication puzzle, what I have to do is first is figure out what are my factors, my numbers that are getting multiplied and divided, and then what is my product. These numbers on the outside are my factors. They're always going to be the ones that are getting multiplied together, and these numbers here are going to be the products. They're going to be the big numbers in my problem. They're the answers to my multiplication problem. To help me to really sort that out, I usually end up going over and tracing over those lines that divide out the factors from the products, just so that I'm always clear about these are the numbers that are getting multiplied together. These here are going to be the answers, the big numbers. Now the next thing I need to do is make sure I understand where each multiplication problem is going to end up. So anything that's in this row right here is going to be multiplied by 3. Anything that's in this row right here is going to be multiplied by 5. Anything that's in this column is going to be multiplied by 7. And anything that's in this column is going to be multiplied by 8. So this box right here is in the 3 row and the 8 column. So it's going to be 3 times 8. Well, there's lots of ways that you can solve that. You could think of the 3 song. You could think of the 8 song. You could draw 3 circles and put 8 little dots in each circle and count it up. Either which way, I'm going to eventually get to the number 24 because 3 times 8 equals 24. This square down here is also in the 8th column, but notice how it's in the 5 row this time. So I'm thinking, what is 8 times 5? Well, the easiest way I can figure that out in my head would be counting by 5s 8 times. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Notice now I've shifted over to a new column. I'm in the sevens column. So I'm thinking, what is 7 times 3 for this top square? I could count by 7. I could count by 3. I could draw 3 circles and put 7 in each one. There's lots of different ways of doing it. If I did my 3 song, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. I'd be up to 7 of them, so my answer is going to be 21. Moving down, I'm still in the 7th column, but this time I'm in the 5's row. So I'm thinking, what is 7 times 5? Counting by 5, I've had 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So this answer is going to be 35. So you can see how these are all bigger numbers. They're the products. They're the answers. These are smaller numbers. They're on the outside. This is my 3's row, so anything in here is multiplied by 3. This is my 5's row. Anything here is multiplied by 5. This is the 8's row, so anything in these squares are multiplied by 8. And this is the 7's row, so anything in here is multiplied by 7. Now let's try another one where the numbers are s aren't quite as nicely organized. Notice that in this one, I only have some of the factors and I have some of the products. So the first thing I do again is I kind of divide out for myself so I can keep clear in my head when I'm multiplying and what are my answers. So out here, these are my factors, they're what I'm multiplying together. And here, these are my answers, these are the product. I'm going to start with the one that's easiest for me, and that would be this square right here. The reason why this is easiest is because it's in the 9's row and the 6th column. I have both of my factors here, so it's just a straight multiplication problem. I can use my 9's trick to help me out. If I hold out my hand, count 6 fingers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, put that finger down. I can see I have 5 10 and 4 1, so my answer would be 54. Now the rest of these are a little bit more challenging. I can't figure out what goes over here because I don't have either of the factors that I need. I need to take the problems one by one and try to figure out what are my missing factors. I'm going to start with this number up here. I know that I'm taking 9 times some mystery number to try to get 27 as my answer. To find it, I need to count by 9 until I get up to 27. So if I started with 9, another 9 would be 18, another 9 would be 27. So if I have 3 9s, I'm eventually going to get up to 27. That means my missing factor is going to be 3. Now it still doesn't help me solve this one right here because I'm still missing my second factor. So this time I have to use the other product that I know. I know 6 times some mystery number is going to give me 24. So I'm going to count by what I do know, the 6's, until I get up to 24. You could do this on scratch paper, you could do it with tallies, whatever way it's successful for you. Eventually, though, you need to be able to count by 6's until you get to 24. So that would be 6, 12, 
18, 24. I counted four groups of six in order to get me up to 24, so that means my second missing factor is going to be 4, because 6 times 4 is 24. Well, now I'm in a good spot, because now for this missing square, I know I'm taking 4 times 3 to get this missing number. 4 groups of 3, or 3 groups of 4, is going to give me 12. Now let's try another one. This one might look a little bit harder, but it's actually a pretty easy problem because of all of those zeros. I know that there's a trick when I'm multiplying by um, multiples of 10, and that's that I can ignore the zeros at first and then just balance out my equation later. So this column, or row right here is the 60 row. This column is the 20 row, so this square right here would be multiplying 6 times 20. In my head, I want to think of it as just the 6 and just the 2. 6 times 2 is going to be 12. Now the problem is, my problem really wasn't 6 times 2, it's 6d times 20. Notice how there's two zeros that I haven't dealt with yet. To balance out my equation, I need to now take those two zeros and put them in my answer as well. So 6d times 20 is 1,200, because 6 times 2 is 12. And then I added two zeros to balance it out. Let's try another one. This time I moved down to a new row, so this time I'm taking 70 times 20. Well, I ignore the zeros and just think, what is 7 times 2? I know that 7 times 2 is 14. I'm not done, though. The problem wasn't just 7 times 2. It's 70 times 20. Notice how there's two extra zeros in my problem. So to balance it out, I need to put two extra zeros onto my answer. Now I have found that 7d times 20 is 1,400. Let's move up to the square right here. Notice again, separating out my factors from my products, I can see that I'm multiplying 60 times 100. This time I have two zeros and this third zero down here. I can ignore all those zeros at first, though, luckily, and I'm just thinking, what is 6 times 1? Well, that's a super easy problem. 6 times 1 is just 6. I'm not done, though. Now I count the zeros. There's 1, 2, 3 zeros in the problem, so I need to add 1, 2, 3 zeros to my answer. 60 times 100 is 6,000. In my last one, again, I focus on the numbers that aren't 0. 7 and 1. 7 times 1 is 7. Now I worry about balancing out the zeros. I have 1, 2, 3, 0. So in my answer, I need to have 1, 2, 3, zeros. Notice I'm focusing on how many zeros are on the outside in the factors, and then I have to add that many zeros into my answer, the product. Let's try another one where some of those factors are missing. First thing I do is I draw those lines so I can really sort out what are the numbers that I'm multiplying by and what are my products, my answers. I'm going to start with the easy one again. The easy one is this square right here because notice both of my factors, 40 and 50, have already been given to me. So I start by ignoring the zeros and I'm thinking what is 4 times 5? Well, I know that 4 times 5 is 20. Now be careful. Here's where kids want to make the mistake. They think, okay, I figured out my multiplication, now I balance my zeros. And they think, okay, one zero, two zeros. And then inside, they think, well, I already have one zero, so I need to add another zero. Eh. Try again. Let's think if that would make sense. If I only add one zero, I would be saying it's 200. 40 groups of 50 cannot only be 200. If I think about it, four groups of 50 is 200. I want 40 groups of 50. So let's try this again. We figured out that 4 times 5 equals 20. Now I need to balance my zeros by adding on the extra. That means this zero and this zero have to be added on as extra. I need to add two more zeros. The answer really should be 2,000 because 4 times 5 is 20. That zero doesn't count right now, it's just part of the answer, plus 1 two extra zeros, one, two extra zeros, we give me 2,000. So now I need to figure out my missing factor.
factors in order to figure out this missing product. Let's go ahead and work on this one right here. I know that this mystery number times 50 is going to equal 150. Just like before we ignored the zeros at first, I'm going to start by ignoring the zeros. And I'm just going to ask myself, how do I go from 5 and get to 15? Or how many 5s do I need to finally get up to 15? To figure that out, I count by 5s. 5, 10, 15. I needed 3 5s in order to get to 15. So I'm going to start by putting that 3 there. Because I know that 3 times 5 is going to be 15. Now I have to worry about balancing the zeros. We need to figure out how many zeros we already have on our factors on the outside. Well, this one doesn't have any zeros. This one has one zero. So I would think that if I start with 3 times 5 and get 15, then so far I would just need to add one more zero. Well, look, there's my one extra zero. I don't have any more zeros to add. So that means I'm done with my problem. I've double checked my work. 3 times 5 is 15. I have just one extra zero, so I add just one extra zero. I'm good to go. It's really, really important when you get to this type of a problem with zeros and missing factors that you always double, triple, quadruple check your work. We found one of our missing factors. We need to find the other missing factor. To do that, we are going to use 2,440. Now that's a lot of zeros. Let's not if, or worry about the zeros right now and just think about how do I go from 4 to 24, or how many 4s do I need to get to 24? To figure that out, we count by 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. If I count 6 4s, I'll eventually get up to 24. So I'm going to go ahead and write that 6 up here so I don't forget that. Now I think, okay, 6 times 4, that got rid of my 24. How many zeros do I already have? Well, here's one zero, and over here I don't have any zeros. That means I've used up this zero right here. My problem's not done, though. I notice that I still have one more zero. I can't put another zero over here. This number was already given to me. That means I need to add my extra zero up top. Then, like I said, double, triple, maybe even quadruple check your work to make sure you didn't make a silly mistake. We figured out that 4 times 6 is going to give us our 24. Then on the outside, I have one, two zeros. So that means on the inside, I should have one, two zeros. Hey, that worked out perfectly. I know I did the problem correctly. Now, this one should be pretty easy. I've already figured out my factors. I'm thinking 3 times 60 is going to equal this mystery number here. Well, I know that 3 times 6 is 18. Now I worry about balancing my zeros. There's no zeros here. There's one zero here. So I need to add one more zero to finish out my problem. I would end up with 180. So, first step, draw that line to really separate out your factors from your products. If you're given all your factors, then ignore any zeros that might be there. Just multiply the numbers, and then later come back and add in any missing zeros that you ignored. If you are missing some factors, like we were missing factors here, start with the problems that are easy to help you build yourself up. Then, count by whatever your number you do know until you get up to that target number, and that'll be your missing factor. Then you just have to go back and think about, do all my zeros balance out for my inside? And if not, add your extra zero. Go ahead and try this one on your own. You're going to need a whiteboard. When you're done, stop the, or when you're done, make sure you show it to your teacher. Right now, you need to go ahead and pause the video so that you can get this copy down before it disappears off the screen. Good luck.